In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at layers and layer keyframing in Butterfly Inchworm Animation 2. As you can see, I already have an animation playing. So the first thing I want to do is erase that and start over. I press the Start button and then select New from the main menu. Say yes, I do want to lose the old movie. And I have three options for creating a new one. I'm going to choose Start from Scratch. What that means, if I press the timeline, you can see that I have one layer and one soundtrack, and our one layer only has a single drawing on it. Now that's normally not too useful for animation, but we're just going to use the first layer as a background painting. The first thing I want to do is select a color for the sky, so I'm going to press the left shoulder button to bring up the palette. Then I'm going to choose sort of a light blue and tap background and that will be our sky color. Next, I'm going to choose the line brush and black and we're going to draw just sort of a simple drawing for a backdrop. Maybe some triangles for mountains and how about a little tree. Okay, now let's fill that in with color. I press A to open up the tool chooser and then I tap the fill icon. Let's choose a color for the ground, sort of a dark green, and then maybe a color for the mountains, sort of a reddish brown, maybe a lighter green for the tree, and sort of a lighter brown for the tree trunk. So that's our backdrop. Now, for the main character of our movie, I want to draw a house. So I could draw it on the background layer, but that would mean that if the house changed at all, I'd actually have to also change the mountains and the trees. So this is why we need a new layer. I press Y to open the timeline, and then I hit the plus icon and select Add Layer or Soundtrack. Choose Animation Layer, and so Layer 1 is going to be our house, while Layer 0 was the background. We can keep track of these easier by renaming them. I press the gear menu and then Rename Layer. Type background. Then I'll select layer one and rename that to house. Okay, so now I'm going to choose black and go back to my line tool and draw a quick house shape. Throw something kind of dumb and simple. Now it may look like I drew the house on the same layer as the background, but I didn't. I can turn off the background and still be left with the house on the house layer and vice versa. So let's fill in our house color and choose the fill tool then get kind of a red color for the side of the house, maybe lighter for here and we'll choose sort of a maybe a dark gray kind of color for the roof and the lighter gray for the side. There's our house. Now, what I'd like to do is have an animation where a comet comes down out of the sky and smashes that house. So to do that, we need another layer that's going to hold the comet. So I press Y to open the timeline, then press plus, add layer or soundtrack, animation layer. Now you can have up to five animation layers in Butterfly and up to two soundtracks. Now our third layer is going to be a comet. And I want that to be sort of fluid animation. I'm actually going to use live painting to track my hand motion. So we need a lot of frames in this layer. So I tap where it says 1 and we have 97 frames free. So I'm going to use up like 80 of those. Okay. So this layer, our comet, has 80 blank frames on it. When I start the animation playing, it runs through the entire loop of uh, 80 frames. Now what I want to do is select the shape brush and then sort of an orange color. And I'm going to open the brush menu with the X button so that I can raise the size of my brush shape. Something large. That'll be our comet. And maybe 
since it's going to be kind of a fireball, I'll make it more of a yellow. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just drag my hand real fast to record the animation of the comet hitting the house. If you watch the frame numbers changing in the upper right, I want to wait till the loop drops back down to zero again to record my animation. So I'm going to watch those frame numbers and then now, bam, that's it. That's our comet hitting the house. So now to make that a little bit more realistic or lively looking, I'm going to open up the brush menu again and uh, get a smaller circle and we're going to make some particles for the explosion. So let's get sort of an orange color and now whenever this hits I'm going to just use the same sort of technique to just drag out sort of particles for the explosion. So you can imagine it coming in and then every time, let me make them a little bit bigger. Every time that hits I'm just going to drag out new particles. And if I wanted to be super realistic, I could actually have the particles get smaller instead of bigger. That seems more realistic. And maybe I'll do a few with sort of a more of a red color. It's kind of fun to make sort of particle or effects type animations this way where you're just sort of recording what the pen does with your hand. So that's probably enough for now. So there we've got the comet coming down and forming a little explosion. The last thing we need to do is actually have our house change and that's where keyframes come in. If I go back to the timeline, I select my house layer, you notice that it's only got one drawing, so that house never changes. What we want to do is make that have two drawings so that we have the house intact and then the house destroyed. So right around frame 33, we want to have that house be flattened. In order to do that, we hit the plus button and say insert cell on this layer, and we're going to insert a blank cell after the current one. So now if I change frames, you see on frame 32 we have the, the house and then if I step forward we have a blank frame. If I start the animation playing, though, that's not what we want. You see a flickering. That's because by default the layers just play whatever frames they have over and over again in a fast loop. So we need keyframes to tell it how to, how to handle the two drawings that are part of the house layer. So what we're going to do is go back to frame 0, hit plus, and say add keyframe. Now this is the keyframe screen. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this, but this is where you choose the type of keyframe you want, and then these are more settings. We actually want a hold keyframe, and that just tells it to hold on one cell until we tell it something different. So I hit OK. We want it to hold cell 0. And now you see there's a red marker. That means for the entirety of this layer, it's holding on frame zero. It's ignoring that other frame that I put in. Now we're going to go to frame 32, let's say, uh, 33. And that's where we want it to switch to that second blank frame that I made. So we see hit plus, add keyframe, and now we want to hold on frame one. So you'll see here, there's another marker at frame 32. So when I hit play, it holds on the first frame and then switches to the second frame when it hits that marker. Does that make sense? I hope so. So the last thing we need to do is actually draw our flattened house on this blank frame. So I go back and I get my line tool, select black, and I'm just going to draw some flattened shapes for the house. That'll be our roof. And then I get the fill tool, and I can actually step back, open up the palette, and use the eyedropper tool to grab the same colors I used on my first frame to fill in the second frame. Step back, open up the palette, use the eyedropper to grab my roof color, go forward and fill that in.
So there's our flattened house. Intact house, flattened house. Now if I play it, here's from the beginning. So it's sort of a decent animation of a house getting flattened by a comet. I mean, it's no 1998 Armageddon starring Bruce Willis, but maybe we can make it a little better if we add sound to it. Select the soundtrack, and then down here we have the sound that's selected from the library. I'm going to tap that, and then here's our category of sounds. We have crashes, and here's an explosion. I'm going to go back and raise the pitch a little bit, and then I want to add a keyframe for the soundtrack. So I hit plus, add sound keyframe, and then there's our explosion. Now the thing is, I didn't make it at the right frame. I, want to act, I wanted it to actually happen right as the comet hits the house. So I can easily change that just by dragging the keyframe back. Now if I hit play, all right, there's our comet hitting a house animation. A little bit longer and more involved than the other tutorials, but I think we went into more depth on a few topics. Check out some of the other tutorials for more techniques.